Okay. Welcome to the 2015 Carol Spaziani Intellectual Freedom Festival. I'm Terry Byers. I'm a member of the Intellectual Freedom Festival Committee. Um, we're going live today on our channel because the person whom, for whom the um, program is named, Carol Spaziani, can't be with us, but she's watching. And so we promised her that we'd shoot everything live today. So um, before we get started on today's program, I just want to remind people that tomorrow night we have a book discussion on the book Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, and it'll be at 7 p.m. in this room. Um, we've got some people from the law school who will be discussing that. And then also tomorrow will be the last of our banned book story times in the children's room. So the children's room staff have picked out banned books for children and they're reading them during the story hours and this will be the third and final one. And that will segue into the um, book festival that's coming up this weekend. So we're excited about being part of that too. But today's program, for the third year in a row, we are having Reading Aloud come and give us some poetry. And Audre Lorde said, poetry is not only dream and vision, it is the skeleton architecture of our lives. It lays the foundation for a future of change, a bridge across our fears, and what has never been before. And today I'm gonna to let Ina talk about what you guys will be reading and what everybody will be listening to. So um, I'll get off of here and just wanna welcome everybody to Iowa City Public Library today, and we'll get started with our program. Hello. All of us at Reading Aloud are so pleased to be participating in the Intellectual Freedom Festival for the third year. Um, they've, Terry has given, has had a lot of faith in us to let us simply tell her <clears throat> a title for this program and put it together ourselves. Uh, the program is a result of many sessions in which we everyone brought in poems, poems of protest that we talked about and thought what would make a good program. So the program today, as you see behind you, is Poets on the Barricades, Voices of the Oppressed. And half of these poems are poems about slavery and racism, which seems quite right considering that that scourge is still with us today. The other poems are about oppression in different places, different peoples. We haven't covered all the oppression that there is in the world. How could we do that? But I think we have a, uh, a program of interest to you. Let me introduce the readers. From that side, Michael Chan, Johnny Ellsworth, Mary Gutman, Carrie Malone, Nancy Lynch, our new reader, Jim Piper, <laughs> Betty Norbeck, Kathy Mitchell, and Jim Curry, <clears throat> and I'm Ina Lowenberg. Please hold your uh, applause until the end of the program. I miss Chuck Felling because he's sitting in the wrong row. Excuse me. He's been the longest term member of Reading Aloud, so there's Chuck. <clears throat> okay. Please no applause until the end of the program, and I hope that you enjoy it. Slave Ships by Lucille Clifton. Let's see. Loaded like spoons into the belly of Jesus, where we lay for months, where we lay for weeks, for months in the sweat and stink of our own breathing. Jesus, why do you not protect us? Chained to the heart of the angel, where the prayers we never tell and hot and red as our bloody ankles. Jesus, angel, can these be men who vomit us out from ships called Jesus? Angel, grace of God into a heathen country. Jesus, angel, ever again, can this tongue speak? Can these bones walk? Grace of God, can this sin live? Taint by Grace Nichols. But I was traded by men the color of my own skin. 
worn away by men whose heels had become hoofs, whose hands had turned talons, bearing me down to the trail of darkness. But I was traded by men the color of my own skin, traded like a fowl, like a goat, like a sack of kernels I was traded, for beads, for pans, for trinkets. No, it isn't easy to forget what we refuse to remember. Daily, I rinse the taint of treachery from my mouth. Two poems by Natasha Tretherway. Southern History. Before the war, they were happy, he said, quoting our textbook. This was senior year history class. The slaves were clothed, fed, and better off under a master's care. I watched the words blur on the page. No one raised a hand, disagreed, not even me. It was late. We still had reconstruction to cover before the test, and luckily, three hours of watching gone with the wind. History, the teacher said, of the Old South, a true account of how things were back then. On screen, a slave stood big as life, big mouth, bucked eyes, our textbooks grinning proof, a lie my teacher guarded. Silent, so did I. Incident. We tell the story every year, how we peered from the windows, shades drawn, though nothing really happened, the charred grass now green again. We peered from the windows, shades drawn, at the cross trussed like a Christmas tree, the charred grass still green. Then we darkened our rooms, lit the hurricane lamps. At the cross trussed like a Christmas tree, a few men gathered, white as angels in their gowns. We darkened our rooms and lit hurricane lamps the wicks trembling in their fonts of oil. It seemed the angels had gathered white men in their gowns. When they were done, they left quietly. No one came. The wicks trembled all night in their fonts of oil. By morning, the flames had all dimmed. When they were done, the men left quietly no one came. Nothing really happened. By morning, all the flames had dimmed. We tell the story every year. Strange Fruit by Duane Wiggins, Maurice Pearl, and Lewis Allen. This was originally a song made famous by Billie Holiday. Southern trees bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Pastoral scene of a gallant south, the bulging eyes and the twisted mouth, scent of magnolias, sweet and fresh, then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is fruit for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rot, for the trees to drop. Here is a strange and bitter crop.
Hi, Carol. This is a poem by County Cullen, Yet Do I Marvel. <clears throat> I doubt not God is good, well-meaning, kind, and did he stoop to quibble, could tell why a little buried mole continues blind, why flesh that mirrors him must someday die. Make plain the reason tortured Tantalus is baited by the fickle fruit. Declare if merely brute caprice dooms Sisyphus, Sisyphus to struggle up a never-ending stair. Inscrutable his ways are, and immune to catechism by a man, mind too strewn with petty cares to slightly understand what awful brain compels his awful hand. Yet do I marvel at this curious thing, to make a black poet and bid him sing. The next poem is by Philip Levine. We've read Philip Levine as the poet of Detroit factories in which he worked as a young man. But Philip Levine became a poet. He left Detroit for the writer's workshop and beyond. And in 1968, he came back to Detroit for a visit, the year after the terrible riots in that city. And he wrote this poem, and about it he wrote, it is the most potent expression of rage I have written. Rage at my government for the racial war at the heart of our cities against our urban poor. And think of it, 1968. They Feed, They Lion by Philip Levine. Out of burlap socks, out of bearing butter, out of black bean and wet slate bread, out of the acids of rage, the candor of tar, out of creosote, gasoline, drive shafts, wooden dollies, they lie and grow. Out of the gray hills of industrial barns, out of rain, out of bus ride, West Virginia to kiss my ass, out of buried aunties, mothers hardening like pounded stumps, out of stumps, out of the bones need to sharpen and the muscles to stretch, they lie and grow. Earth is eating trees, fence posts, gutted cars. Earth is calling in her little ones. Come home, come home from pig balls, from the ferocity of pig driven to holiness, from the furred ear and the full jowl, come the response of the hung belly, from the purpose they lie and grow. From the sweet glues of the trotters, come the sweet kinks of the fist, from the full flower of the hams, the thorax of caves. From bow down, come rise up, Come they lion from the weeds of shovels, the grained arm that pulls the hands, they lion grow. From my five arms and all my hands, from all my white sins forgiven, they feed. From my car passing under the stars, they lion from my children inherit. From the oak turned to a wall, they lion. From they sack and they belly opened, and all that was hidden burning on the oil-stained earth, they feed, they lion, and he comes.
Ballad of Birmingham by Dudley Randall. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham in a freedom march today? No, baby, no, you may not go for the dogs are fierce and wild and clubs and horses Guns and jails aren't good for a little child. But mother, I won't be alone. Other children will go with me and march the streets of Birmingham to make our country free. No, baby, no, you may not go. For I fear those guns will fire, but you may go to church instead and sing in the children's choir. She has combed and brushed her night dark hair and bathed rose petals sweet and drawn white gloves on her small brown hands and white shoes on her feet. The mother's smile to know her child was in the sacred place, but that smile was the last smile to come upon her face. For when she heard the explosion, her eyes grew wet and wild. She raced to the streets of Birmingham, calling for her child. She crawled through the bits of glass and brain, then lifted out a shoe. Oh, here's the shoe my baby wore, but baby, where are you? At the end of August 2005, Hurricane Katrina, a Category 5, wreaked havoc on the city of New Orleans. Man on the TV Say by Patricia Smith. Go. He say it's simple, gray eyes straight on and watered. He see it in that machine throat they got. On the wall behind him, there's a moving picture of the sky dripping something worse than rain. Go, he say. Pick up y'all black asses and run. Leave your house with its splinters and pocked roof. Leave the pork chops drifting in grease and onion. Leave the whining dog, your one good watch, that purple church hat, the mirrors. Go. Uh-huh like our bodies got wheels and gas. Like at the end of that running, there's an open door with dry and song inside. He act like we're supposed to wrap ourselves in picture frames, shadow boxes in the bathroom rugs, and then walk the freeway, racing the water. Get out. Can't he see that our bodies are just our bodies tied to what we know? Go. So we'll go. Because the man say it's strong now, mad like God pointing the way out of paradise. Even he got to know our favorite ritualist route, that none of us done ever known a horizon, especially one that cools our dumb running, whispering urge and constant, this way, over here. I, 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 De La Grifa Negra by Julio de Burgos. <clears throat> I, 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 that am kinky haired and pure black, kinks in my hair, coffee in my lips, and my flat nose 
Mozambiques. Black of pure tint, I cry and laugh the vibration of being a black statue, a chunk of night in which my white teeth are lightning, and to be a black vine which entwines in the black and curves the black nest in which the raven lies. Black chunk of black in which I sculpt myself. I, 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 my statue is all black. They tell me that my grandfather was the slave for whom the master paid 30 coins. I, 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 that the slave was my grandfather is my sadness, is my sadness. If he had been the master, it would be my shame that in men as in nations, if being the slave is having no rights, being the master is having no conscience. I, I, I wash the sins of the white king in forgiveness, black queen. I, 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 the race escapes me and buzzes and flies toward the white race to sink in its clear water or perhaps the white will be shadowed in the black. I, 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 my black race flees and with the white runs to become bronzed, to be one for the future fraternity of America. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room? Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, I rise. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Blood Gain Call by Juan Felipe Herrera, who is our new Poet Laureate of the United States. Calling all tomato pickers, the ones wearing death frowns instead of jackets. Calling all orange and lemon carriers, come down the ladder to this hole. Calling all chili pepper sack humpers, you, yes you, the ones with the crucifix. Calling all garlic twisters, caught in the winter spell of frozen sputum. Calling all apple tossers, high up in the heaven of pesticides stick-faced, calling all onion priests and onion nuns and onion saints killing for rain, calling all tobacco pullers, 
thick leaf rollers in the ice burn of North Carolina, calling all melon pitchers in the river machine in the assembly bed of bones, calling all artichoke pressers kneeling at the mount of signs chanting om, calling all peach slicers preserving shells in the form of a tiny orange fetus, calling all lettuce skirts kicking lust down to the underworld soul prison, calling all watermelon shiners paring the sugary womb in search of goddess, calling all cotton pilots seeding the froth on my mother's grave rebellious, calling all strawberry weavers threading your wire mesh heart with thorns, calling all tomato pickers the old ones wearing frayed radiator masks. Written in pencil in the sill box car by Dan Pegas. Here in this shipment, I am Eve with Abel, my son. If you see my older son, Cain, the son of Adam, tell him that I. This is an excerpt from a poem titled Open, Closed, Open by Yehuda Amakai. I wasn't one of the six million who died in the Shoah. I wasn't even among the survivors. And I wasn't one of the 600,000 who went out of Egypt. I came to the Promised Land by sea. No, I was not in that number although I still have the fire and the smoke within me, pillars of fire and pillars of smoke that guide me by night and by day. I still have inside me the mad search for emergency exits, for soft places, for the nakedness of the land, for the escape into weakness and hope. I still have within me the lust to search for living water with quiet talk to the rock or with frenzied blows. Afterwards, silence. No questions, no answers. Jewish history and world history grind me between them like two grindstones, sometimes to a powder. And the solar year and the lunar year get ahead of each other or fall behind, leaping they set my life in perpetual motion. Sometimes I fall into the gap between them to hide or to sink all the way down. Self-Help for Fellow Refugees by Lee Young Lee. If your name suggests a country where bells might have been used for entertainment, or to announce the entrances and exits of the seasons, or the birthdays of gods or demons, it's probably best to dress in plain clothes when you arrive in the United States and try not to talk too loud. If you happen to have watched armed men beat and drag your father out the front door of your house and into the back of an idling truck before your mother jerked you from the threshold and buried your face in her skirt folds, try not to judge your mother too harshly. Don't ask her what she thought she was doing, turning a child's eyes away from history and toward that place all human aching starts. 
And if you meet someone in your adopted country and think you see in the other's face an open sky, some promise of a new beginning, it probably means you're standing too far. If you think you read in the other as in a book whose first and last pages are missing the story of your own birthplace, a country twice erased, once by fire, once by forgetfulness, it probably means you're standing too close. In any case, try not to let another carry the burden of your own nostalgia or hope. And if you're one of those whose left side of the face doesn't match the right, it might be a clue Looking the other way was a habit your predecessors found useful for survival. Don't lament not being beautiful. Get used to seeing while not seeing. Get busy remembering while forgetting. Dying to live while not wanting to go on. Very likely your ancestors decorated their bells of every shape and size with elaborate calendars and diagrams of distant star systems but with no maps for scattered descendants. And I bet you can't say what language your father spoke when he shouted to your mother from the back seat of the truck. Let the boy see. Maybe it wasn't the language you used at home. Maybe it was a forbidden language. Or maybe there was too much screaming and weeping and the noise of guns in the streets. It doesn't matter. What matters is this. The kingdom of heaven is good, but heaven on earth is better. Thinking is good, but living is better. Alone in your favorite chair with a book you enjoy is fine, but spooning is even better. Poems by Mina Kandasamy. Mina Kandasamy is a uh, person of the Dalit class from, in India. Uh, you may re have heard that before, called the Untouchables. And in the second poem, it's sometimes called the Aregians. Dignity. Sons of the oppressor caste, you are virtuous children of virtuous fathers born in an envious position because of your virtuous deeds. You stick to your faith, the incurable sickness of your minds. We don't stop you from continuing to attend centuries of cultivated super-egos. We will even let you wallow in the rare happiness that hierarchy provides. But don't suppress our rightful share of dignity. It might even prove helpful if you ever learned that virtue, though inherited, was nothing beyond the appearance of the footprint of a bird on water. Liquid Tragedy, Karamacheda, 1985. Buffalo bath, urine, bullshit drinking water for the Dalits, the very same pond. Practice for eons. A bold Dalit lady dares to question injustice, hits forth with her pot. Her indignation is avenged, fury let loose, violence, rapes. Consult history. If there was a way out of them, then there shall be a way out now. Sucker arise with the steamed father of our nation. His son Adi speaks. If Arajans don't get water in this village, let them set, up, set on a journey sojourn themselves, set on a sojourn elsewhere. The rotten example is obeyed. Casting behind cruel memories, Dalit's exit, weary of the persecution, and wander all over the nation. Again, a Dalit exodus, total surrender. T. 
CSA by Amit Majmudar. Off with the wristwatch, the Reebok, the belt. My laptop's in a bin. I dig out the keys from my jeans and do my best Midwestern grin. At O'Hare, at Atlanta, at Dallas, Fort Worth, it happens every trip at LaGuardia, Logan, and Washington, Dallas. The customary strip is never enough for a young brown male whose name comes up at random. Lest the randomness of it be doubted, observe how Myrtle's searched in tandem, how Doris's six-pack of boost has been seized and Ethel gets the wand. How polite of the screeners to sham paranoia when what they really want is to pick out the swarthiest, scruffiest of us and pat us top to toe, my fellow Ahmeds and my alien Alis, Mohammed, alias Mo my buddies from med school, my doubles partners, my dark, unshaven brothers whose names overlap with the crazies and god fiends, ourselves the goateed other. Samin Behabani was called the Lioness of Iran. She was persecuted by the regime, but never lost her patriotism. This poem became especially popular after the 2009 protests, the violent protests following the disputed election. <clears throat> My country, I will build you again. My country, I will build you again, if need be, with bricks from my life. I will build columns to support your roof, if need be, with my bones. I will inhale again the perfume of flowers favored by your youth. I will wash again the blood off your body with torrents of my tears. Once more, the darkness will leave this house. I will paint my poems blue with the color of our sky. The resurrector of old bones will grant me in his bounty a mountain's superior splendor in his testing grounds. Old I may be, but given the chance, I will learn. I will begin a second youth alongside my progeny. I will recite the hadith of love and country with such fervor as to make each word bear life. There still burns a fire in my breast to keep undiminished the warmth of kinship I feel for my people. Once more, you will grant me strength through my poems have settled in my blood. Once more, I will build you with my life, though it be beyond my means. The Hands Again by Ahmad Dabur a Palestinian. No seas in books. I seek oceans, but they don't respond. No bed in the trees. Whenever I want to rest, the dangerous branches awaken. No dialogue in language. Their words only reach my lips, never my inner nerves. No fields in the clouds, only blood 
that tries to give its news to horizons. No seas, no books, no bed, no tree, no dialogue, no language, no fields, no clouds. Grow strong, my hands. If you should, they'd pay attention then. The last poem will be read by Jim Piper, and it will leave you on a more hopeful note. But I want to point out that the title of it is Incantation. So its hopefulness is not a description of the world that we have. It is using a spell to try to bring magic into this world. Incantation by Shazla Merlish. Human reason is beautiful and invincible. No bars, no barbed wire, no pulping of books, no sentence of banishment can prevail against it. It establishes the universal ideas in language and guides our hands so we write truth and justice with capital letters, lie and impression with small. It puts what should be above things as they are, is an enemy of despair and a friend of hope. It does not know Jew from Greek or slave from master, giving us the estate of the world to manage. It saves austere and transparent phrases from the filthy discord of tortured words. It says that everything is new under the sun, opens the congealed fist of the past. Beautiful and very young, her philosophia, and poetry, her ally in the service of the good. As late as yesterday, nature celebrated their birth. The news was brought to the mountains by a unicorn and an echo. Their friendship will be glorious. Their time has no limit. Their enemies have delivered themselves to destruction. Thank you very much. That's our program. If anybody has any questions, we would be glad to answer. Thank you for coming. <laughs>